Not only Jewish Zionists, there are Christian Zionists. From your perspective, Palestine did exist, and then someone, the Zionists, came and occupied Palestine. They had already decided not to live together with the Palestinians, that we need to kill and take the land. When they're in the Western world, they were persecuted, put in pogroms, humiliated, denigrated, chucked out. They, they were never wanted. Given that you know the history of the Palestinians' behavior in Lebanon, mm. what made you become an advocate of this cause? In social media, you mean an act? Yeah. Really? Act. Really act. acts in Tel Aviv. I think it would be the most religious group at risk. You want me to say Christians? I don't want you to say anything. <laughs>
you had an area, you had a group of people, you had a land called Lebanon, you had a land called Palestine. Lebanon was mentioned, I don't know, in the Bible. In the Bible, of so course, that goes but, back 2,000 but, years ago. But Palestine, did it? Palestine's ever, in the Bible. Is in the Bible. Pal- Palestine's in the Bible. You know, Babylon, they had different names. Depending on which Bible you read, too, people have manipulated the Bibles. But <laughs> so we you know, the Judea Bible. and Samaria. But no, no. But really, you have a look at the the cities and the ports, and okay, this is so. From your perspective, Palestine did exist, and then someone, the Zionists, came and occupied Palestine. That's what you're saying. Well, or just not. one thing. There was a map back in the 1600s of the region of the Middle East. And it had the name Palestine on it. So you, there are historical cartographers who mapped out, and that's what that area of land was defined as mm. Palestine. You know, you, you've got to, you've got to, you know, I don't, your question of was there a country? It wasn't really, we didn't really have those. So I need, I, I need, I'm facts. one of the people who actually lived in Lebanon. And mm. We went through all of this struggle and yes. we never got a clear answer. But you see, the answer comes, you've got a land, of, you've got a people living on this land. No Is different it? to the Lebanese. We were part of greater Syria, right? We were part of, Lebanon was part of greater Syria until Lebanon the had, end. Yeah, Lebanon had, oh no, Lebanon was the small Lebanon. So Mount Lebanon. Oh, Mount Lebanon. Mount Lebanon. So we have now, Lebanon. we have the builders that we have today because of the Balfour Declaration, sykes Pico Agreement. So... The Which French is the same agreement that created Palestine, Palestine, or and created Israel? Created Palestine. So Palestine was defined after World. It was clear. It was there. Israel never became a state because they see they weren't supposed to take the state in the the agreement. It was, we're going to allow your people to go back to Palestine and there is going to be a respect and acceptance of the existing peoples on the land and there would be a cooperation. They didn't say, here, here's all of Palestine. They were going to give the Jewish people a certain part of, you know, you could go back to your land to go back there. The full agreement was there has to be a so cooperation. They say you can go back to your land. So they accepted With, that it was a Jewish land. No, they just said this is going to be the new. Ho- you can have a homeland. Homeland. It's all in the def- definition okay. anyway. So it's, it's technical. But okay. nineteen okay. in all in all you know nineteen forty three, um, Lebanon was established, but it wasn't until um, by nineteen forty. Seven, there was the six percent of the population only was Jewish, you know, not substantial amount um, of Palestine. But their agenda and their Nakba was, you know, why they started the Nakba was when they came, and this has been published. They knew that when they came there, when the Jewish people- when the Jewish people came there. They knew that for them to, they wanted, they weren't going to live, they they had already decided not to live together with the Palestinians, that we need to kill and take the land. The Zionist philosophy and ideology was to take the land. There was never any uh, consideration or acceptance, even to this day, of sharing the land. And their goal, as we saw, um, immediately, 1947, the Nakba started. They <laughs> women, children. <laughs> there's a video publicly out. I don't know if you've seen them, with um, interviews with people who men who fought in the Nakba in 1947, saying, "Yeah, we went into these villages, and there was this lovely, sexy uh, Palestinian girl, and we took her, and we all had." And then we threw her. Mm. Yani talking like this, and these are old people, 90 year old um, men talking honestly, the stories, telling you the stories of what they did. And <laughs> not anyone else saying it. It was like, 
Oh my God. And this is coming out by Jewish people who are against Zionism. They're going and making these films and getting these stories and they're against this ideology. It's inhumane and it's not, it's not in line with Judaism. Judaism, the, 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 the religion, religion yep. says you can't fight, you can't kill, you, you live in your, with your neighbor. The, the, um, you know, the Orthodox Jews, so it's written in our Torah that we should never lead. We should live with the Muslims. We will live in peace if we are under Muslim leadership. And the, the most peaceful period for the Jewish people in the whole world when they were never, ever, they've never been persecuted, they've never had any issue or problem, was in the lands that were ruled by the Muslims. When they were in Europe, under Russia, under Germany, under France, under Britain, under America. When they're in the Western world, they were persecuted, put in pogroms, humiliated, denigrated, chucked out. They, they were never wanted. Mm. But they said, well, you look at history and even you have a lot. Again, I've done a lot of, you know, because of the last year, watching these videos of uh, Jews from Iraq, Jews from Syria, Jews from Lebanon, Jews from Palestine, Jews from all over the Middle East saying we lived in peace with our brothers and sisters in these countries. We loved them. We loved the culture. It's like our culture, there was no difference. They never, ever were felt persecuted. You see, this is this is the real Jewish, um, you know, belief. Okay, so tell me something. Why would the Zionists, um, as you're claiming, pick this piece of land out of anywhere around the globe just to go and build their state? And interestingly, in the early 1900s, they can, they looked at many areas of the world, like the Bowers, the British and the French, when they were deciding, okay, we want to give them a homeland. We agree with Zionism. They need a homeland. They looked at so many countries. They even looked at a state in America, Delaware. I can't remember what it was, Wisconsin or something. They looked at the Northern Territory or Western Australia even to give them a section of land in Western Australia. There were five or six other areas in the world, even somewhere in Africa. Um, they, But then they decided it was easier in Palestine and they had this narrative that Palestine was a land without a people for a people without a land, which is bullshit. Because if you, you know, they were saying let, they wrote false fake news back in those times saying that Palestine was, there was no one, there's no Palestinians there. But we have shown through our public, you know, publicity and media how Palestine and, you know, Haifa and, um, you know, all the cities across Jerusalem, and that was a city. Mm. They had functioning cities. They had beautiful laws, like law courts and institutions and women and men dressed very well, like so in Beirut. linked to their religion at all or to their beliefs? They, look, so Zionism is very manipulative. Mm. They have rewritten the Bible, and this is something you'll have to, we, we don't have time to go into. The, there's a, the Zionists in the 1700s, um, uh, one of the Rothschilds, I can't remember his first name. He call he he paid this guy called Cyrus Schofield. He's American. He was convicted of fraud and and bribery and whatever. Anyway, the point is he was a a well known author. He called on him to to write a new Bible. He said, "I want you to write a new Bible, the Schofield, and we're going to call it the Schofield Bible." Yes. And this Bible was to impregnate the new Bible with phrases in it that said, Israel is the promised land. Anyone who blesses Israel will be blessed by God. Anyone who defends Israel will be defended by God. Well, you know, these phrases that made, um, changed and, and embedded the word Israel a lot, but it became the Bible. There's a lot more, but these phrases that you hear now by the Christian evangelical church and the Christian Zionists repeating in America and around the world, they get brought up on the Schofield Bible. The Schofield Bible is not 
It's taken some. So it's not the real Bible. It's taken some things out of the Bible and embedded all of these phrases about Israel and blessing Israel and that, and 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 if you condemn Israel, you will be condemned, and like it scares people. Yeah. So um, I think they will have the right just to uh, um, question what what you're saying now. Great. Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm hope they will. I hope we so. We need to understand what's going on. Yes. But tell me something. How much do you hate Israel? Do you really hate Israel? I don't hate Israel. I don't so hate, and I don't hate the Jews. I've been to Israel. I've been to, to Jerusalem. I covered the peace treaty. I don't hate Israel, and I defend their right to a homeland. I'm with you. The Jewish people deserve a homeland, but not the, but not this way. Not by murder. Not by rape. Not by pillage. Not by destruction. Because you know why? That's teaching other people and other leaders that that's how you win. Yeah. We have rules. We're a civilized world, allegedly. We have international norms. Okay, the world granted you this, you know, this piece of land to share, to share with the Palestinians, yeah. not to take and oppress and and deny them their rights. They just want their rights. They want to be dis- distinguished as human beings with a culture and a belief and a way of life that's theirs. And they don't want to be pushed into the Arab world and be scattered yep. the same as God did to the Jewish people. He scattered them around the world because they denied him and, and um, you know, you know, they denied his rules and made him angry. God got the shits with them, didn't he? So they made God angry and then he sent them away. That was 3,000 years yeah, ago. He scattered them around the world because they idol, They followed idols, false idols. They didn't believe in his word. They didn't stand by his commandments. They just continued to push him. I'm reading a book about this right now. Yeah. It's very fascinating, another one. We're on the right track here, but as um, as a result of, this conflict between Israel and Palestine, a lot of Palestinians came to Lebanon. Yes. And they caused a lot of trouble and caused the country went into turmoil yeah. because of the Palestinian problem behaviors in Lebanon, trying just to occupy the land, kick the Lebanese out. They did a lot of by the way. They did exactly the same in Lebanon, the same behavior. Given that you know that the history of the Palestinians' behavior in Lebanon, Hmm. What made you become an advocate of of this cause, this, despite everything? Okay, so I don't agree with your definition or description of what the Palestinians did because it was a small group of Palestinians who bore who bore arms, but not all the Palestinians are responsible. It's like the militias in Lebanon. Not all the Lebanese were militias and destroyed the country. But you're right, the influence and in an an influx of the PLO and those militant elements of the PLO caused a dis- disruption in Lebanon. And that is a problem for Lebanon. But you can't blame an entire group of people. It's like I as a Lebanese commit a crime and so all the Lebanese are criminals. We've got to be careful about how we judge people because you can't say the same thing about everyone. So you as Daisy Jelion, you're defending the the normal average people, Palestinian people. I'm saying who are not who don't get involved in any uh criminal or like not criminal, but any war act. Of ever. course. Not so all the fault. Palestinians bore arms. Not all the Palestinians were fighting against them. They were living together with Lebanese and they were very grateful. But you had the militant arm that brought that came in and turned the country into a you know a, a, a la a, an, an an area that, that became con- a, a conflict was rife for. But the Lebanese leaders didn't do a very good job of trying to control that. But just to your point, I want to also say um, I am not defending Palestine because it's about the Palestinian cause, although it's the most, the, the greatest injustice of the last hundred years is the Palestinian problem, the Palestinian, what's happened to the Palestinian people. Two points I want to make. I'm, when I got, when this happened, 
I stand for truth and justice. If you look at my website, my values are truth and justice. And it's truth and justice for Lebanon, but truth and justice anywhere. So when there's, uh, you know, people or a situation that where truth and justice is being denied, I should speak up on it because they're my values. And the cause, the Palestinian cause, is that they're denying their truth and they're not giving them any justice. And so that pulled me in, but also because I knew, I knew that Israel was determined if it wins in Gaza and it crushes the Palestinians and takes Gaza, it's coming for Lebanon. I've been studying this for 40 years and I've studied the history and they are not going to stop in Gaza. And they're going to make any excuse to come into Lebanon. And yes, they use the Hezbollah now to come into Lebanon. But that's, that's why that, that was one of the, the biggest pulls for me to get involved in that. And, you know, the, the other thing is the last point I say to you, what do you want? What do Lebanese want? You want Palestinians to get out of Lebanon, don't you? Don't you? I'm here to ask you the question. No, but I mean, as a no, Lebanese, I can't say my point of view. But as a Lebanese, right? What do you hear? We want the the Palestinians to get out. The refugees go go back to your own country, Maha. Yani, Lebanese want the Palestinians and the Syrians out of Lebanon. If we don't help the Palestinians or stand up for their rights to go back to their homeland, we're going to be stuck with them forever. They don't want Lebanese citizenship. And the reason why for many governments in Lebanon have not given them citizenship is because they don't want to deny, they don't want to, they don't want to lose the right of return to their homeland, whether it's in Hebron or Haifa or yes. Gaza. I, I disagree with you 100% on that, but I don't want to get in, into this discussion or like in any shape, way or form because I think the Lebanese government or the governments have been governing Lebanon for the last, I don't know, 75 years. They used these Palestinians. They got a lot of money out of these Palestinians. Um, they put them in camps. Their life is, is so miserable. Yeah. It's about time for them to get the Lebanese nationality regardless. Because if you have the national, Lebanese national, they can go anywhere around the world. They can go to Sweden, mm-hmm. Canada, and they can always go back to Israel. As, as, as a channel. Occupy yeah. Palestinian territory. As a channel. Yes. And it's up to them just to find a way to resolve this issue. My concern is specifically on how can someone, as back to my question, who had, who knows how much the Palestinians did to Lebanon still defend them? And actually, I heard your case, mm. which, which I, I, I agree with you and disagree with you. There's something else, but that's how it is. But I agree with you on the Lebanese government should have given nationality. But uh, I, I agree with you. I, I think there's amazing, and there's some people who did get nationality. I don't have a problem with that at all. I'm just telling you their point of view, the Palestinians who I speak to, we want the right of return, and Israel might use it against us to be able to come back to our homeland if we have yeah, citizenship in another country. I'm in, with you. Leaving them in this miserable I'm place, with you. bring them back 100%. to the It's 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 disgusting, actually, yeah. forcing them to live in these yeah, it's, it's, refugee it's, it's, camps. It's, it's unfair. And they can contribute. Look at Australia. Look at what Australia does to refugees 100%. and immigrants. We built this goddamn country. 100%. And that's the that's the open mindedness. Yeah. But you know, and we the have Palestinians a... are educated people. Very we are very well educated. Mm. You can use them to build your country and they can add value to it. I agree. But that's, I'm with you. Again, that's a, that's another issue. Mm. But look, it's it's something else that I would love to talk to you about is really you as a journalist, like a, you've been I don't know, they've been banning you on yeah, so many social media. Yeah. You've been attacked. Yeah. Really. Hacked. hacked. Nearly hacked from Tel Aviv. Twice. Um, yeah, so, but your case really brings you back in time. And it, it is back to the time where there was the war between the Lebanese and the Palestinians in Lebanon. Mm-hmm. Um Back then, there ha- there have been a lot of rumors that some journalists were paid by the PLO mm. to write pro-Palestinian pieces in Western media. 
Have you, as Daisy Jerion, have you ever been offered any similar support or sponsorship to advocate for the Palestinian cause? Have you ever been received any money to do that? Firstly, I have never heard that side that that happened in the 70s or 80s. Um, and I've looked at it a lot, but I'm not saying it's not true, potentially true. But personally, no, I've never received funding. I don't receive funding. I fund myself. Um, I have a company in Australia, thank God, that I have been able to cover my own costs and I remain completely independent. Um, I don't take anything and I haven't taken anything from anyone. And that allows me to speak with conviction. And I will and and I'm very strong and confident because no one's pulling my strings. And I will take the slaps or whatever they want to the accusations um from whoever wants to throw them at me and people call me, you know, whatever pro Iran, then I'm one minute I'm pro Iran, one minute I'm pro Hezbollah, one minute I'm pro Israel, one minute I'm going, Oh yeah, and and Nabi Burri's funded this and I'm going, you know, like I I'm getting it from every area. I'm going like, you know, I stay completely at peace because I know I have no one pulling my strings and it's according to the rules of journalism that I that I publish what I publish, that I report what I report, and I use and I verify and I read and I check and I do the best that I can. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I do the best that I can to understand the various viewpoints before I speak, before I make a, um, a write anything or speak out on something because I don't want to be perceived as stupid or ignorant or one-sided or not. That's and I have been on this topic for so many decades and I have I listen to so many viewpoints. I'm open. I'm not against anyone. I'm not against Hezbollah. I'm not against Uwet. I'm not against uh, anyone. I am for Lebanese working for Lebanon, not for any external power, not on th- for the interests of themselves. You have to come. You have been, you're an agent and a a servant of the people. When you come into government, you are a servant of the people. We have, we have corruption in politics here, everywhere. You find everywhere. But that's, that's my answer to you. I've never taken a single cent, uh, never been told what story to say, what point of view to take. And I've had to defend my points of view. People saying to me, Oh, you're coming across pro Hezbollah, whatever. I'm saying, listen, Watch the video. Watch the, listen to what I say all the way. Don't take one sentence. Don't take it out of context. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Mm. Really, because I have, and I think this is an opportunity for you just to tell the world how yeah. you really feel and why you're doing whatever you're doing now. Mm. So let, let's, let's imagine that one day Palestine will be declared as a independent country. Yeah. Inshallah, Ya Rab. We know it's not going to happen overnight. We might take another 50 years or 100 years. <laughs> but obviously, at some point, it will happen. It must happen, yeah. Who do you think would be governing the independent state of Palestine? The Sunnis or the Shiites? Honestly, I pray that it's not based on any religion. I Pray that it's based on skill, capability, um, you know, political capability, really, and that they truly formulate a democratic system that allows equality, like we need in in Lebanon too. But I, I don't, I can't even can you know wager a guess whether it's Sunni, Shia, Shia, whatever. But they're mostly Sunni, and there's a lot of Christians, and they've lived together for so many years. There's no more Christians in Palestine. No, you're serious. You're serious. (laughs) There's churches still there. Um, But if they have the independent state, they would do exactly what they've done in Iraq. I don't think so. And Syria. Iraq. And Lebanon. Iraq is. And everywhere they have. Iraq is a problem because they. International community, the the American envoy that was appointed to oversee the governance of Iraq or implementation of a, a, a 
a, a government in Iraq decided in all his brilliance that we should install a confessional system in Iraq like there is in Lebanon. And we're trying to get away from the confessional system. I mean, what crazy man, even so many, you know, politicians later said this was crazy. He created a divided system already. And that is a real problem for Iraq. It should have been a democratic system, irrelevant. Religion should be out. Religion is for your soul. It's for your faith. It's for your intimacy, your privacy. Yeah, look, people over there are driven by religion and you know that. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean they can't change. Religion drove France a, a thousand years ago. Religion drove um, Britain, 100%, 100%. the Protestants. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, hopefully they will change. We, they move forward. They move forward. They got on with it. We need to move forward and we should be allowed to move forward. I'm glad that you have mentioned the religion overall. So <clears throat> if Israel didn't really exist, yeah, Israel doesn't exist in the Middle East, where do you think the boiling point would be today in the Middle East? And specifically, which religions, religious groups would be most at risk? Israel didn't exist. The Middle now East, that you're seeing, the Middle East would be a completely all different this place between different Muslims groups. But they lived together for centuries. It's not a Christian Muslim fight. There's, there's it's not, not a Sunni Muslim fight. It's not Jewish in uh, in Iraq or Iran or yeah. And then there's no big Small. population. Yeah. Yeah. That's causing turmoil. Yeah. Why do they still fight between each other? In in Iraq? In, in Muslims overall. They don't. Look, the thing is you have to understand who's supporting them. So who them. do you think would be the most religious group at risk? You want me to say Christians? I don't want you to say anything. <laughs> I just say, I, I, I honestly <clears throat> need your opinion on that. I honestly, if unfortunately to say this true because of the way it has behaved, Israel has behaved, instead of coming in and embracing its brothers, its Semite brothers, Jews and Arabs are Semites. We're all from the same race, DNA. They, and anyway, we're not going to go into too far into the DNA of the European Jews, but anyway, the, because they came with a, with the fear and aggression, to destroy and kill instead of embrace and live together, it changed the whole face of the Middle East because it put everyone on their backs. Like it came, it took more land than it was given from Egypt, from Jordan, from Lebanon, from Syria. It just keeps greedily taking away and destroying and creating divisions and claiming to be the victim. So the Middle East would not be the way at all it is today. And, and I go back to history. Look at how peaceful they lived. You need, I'm not saying it would be a, ha a haven, but the, the religious groups lived together peacefully for 400 years under Ottoman rule. And the Ottomans didn't come to... Yeah, to, it wasn't peacefully, by the way. It, they, was, there was, of there was course... a lot of massacres. There was a lot of... Killing people, but not all yeah. the time. Well, there were periods, the they, yeah. There were genocides, you know. To you get know. them under control, yeah. I'm just saying to you that they, the people, didn't do that. The Ottomans performed the genocide, but the people of before the Ottomans were living together, yeah, you know, peacefully yeah. for a hundred, before the Ottomans. Before the Ottomans, yeah, yeah. What, you know, what did you have? They were, but they were tribes, and you yeah, had, I don't think they were. Yeah, they were the, fighting always. But no, you had the 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 yeah. you know the the three religions were on the in the Levant area only, really. Yeah, you know, and you had so up to up to Iraq in the Babylonian area, area, but not into obviously Saudi Arabia and those areas. But I can't really answer that question for you because I don't think we would have a Middle East that would in any way look like what it does today. And in my view, there's so many elements that would, you know, have to happen. There's so many ways it could Look, go. I, I know it's a hard question. Yeah. And the uh, the answer is harder, really. Hmm. And this is the reason why we have brain spot. It's just <laughs> to think outside of the box. It is. Because we're sick and tired of the normal question, normal average question. Yeah. 
especially with the one that I'm going to hit you with now. Okay. You know, like we're going back to the war in the Middle East and mm. has always been framed as a religious conflict. Mm. With groups claiming sometimes <laughs> to be the people of God versus those who consider themselves to be the party of God. Mm. Nice. And that's what we have now. The people of God in Israel and the party of God in Lebanon. Mm. This is the recent war, mm. recent conflict. And they both claim justice. And they both claim that they are a dog. They have the right to do whatever they want to do. But you as a Christian, and I believe that, because I did ask you in the previous, um, in the pre-interview, and you did say that you believe in God, you're Christian, mm. and you're a believer. Mm. How can you reason between those two groups of people? People who think they are the people of God and the other group who believes that they are the party of God. Mm. And I asked this um I, I answer you with a response or an answer from an American Jewish comedian that I interviewed a couple of weeks ago because I said to him, Zionism and Judaism and how do you reconcile it? Um, he said, you got to judge by the behavior, by the, you know, the acts. Um, the people of God or the claimed people of God are the Zionists who are now launching this genocidal campaign against the Palestinians and also the Lebanese now. Look at their behaviour. Look at what they say compared to what they do. Look at the morality of they claim to be the most moral army in the world. They claim to be defending civilization. And they go and they destroy civilization. They destroy um, buildings and, and um, you know, historical remnants that are thousands of years old. They're history and civilization. And they have no boundaries when it comes to leaving newborn babies in a hospital, premature babies, forcing the doctors out of the hospital and leaving them... Tell me the psychology of the people who claim to be the people of God. Is this the word of Jesus? Is it? I mean, I'm, I'm, I've said this before. Like my judgment, yeah. and my course of action. I honestly, every single day, I ask Jesus for guidance because I don't know what He wants. Well, sometimes I'm very clear. Sometimes I'm not. I'm like confused right now because there's so many things to fix in the world. But when I, you know, but I'm really so, he's my judge. I think of, okay, when I'm arguing with someone or I'm judging someone, whether they're LGBTQ or whether they're something else, I say, what would Jesus say to this person if he was here? What would Jesus tell me? How, what his words, would, would his words be? I try and listen because that's, my barometer. Mm. That's how I judge how to behave with someone. Is it my right to judge you? Should I throw the first stone? You know, those sort of real examples from him, what he did. And that's the only way I live my life. So for me, look at the example of the people of God or claim the people of God, what their behavior is. Then you have the party of God. The party of God in its, uh, you know, purity, what it's just a name, but if you look at what it was established, first established, it was to get rid of, you know, eliminate Israel uh, and the occupation of Israel in Lebanon. Mm. It started very well with a good uh, cause and a good mission. And then it got pulled into a, a regional, you know, philosophical, ideological. Mm -hmm. We went off guard. The, but I look at their behavior on the ground. And there are too many similarities, but not as aggressive as the Zionists because Hezbollah's people, the Hezbollah, has been responsible for the assassination of amazing Lebanese people. It's been responsible for disrupting and part, being part of a 
government and a system that's destroyed and decayed Lebanon. So do you think in the recent conflict between Israel and um, the party of God, do you think Hezbollah is the victim in this case? If you want to look at facts, the facts, facts yeah. the facts are, according to a BBC report and more reports, 83% of the, the, the um, fire between fire exchange between Israel and Hezbollah has come from Israel. And they showed each other, there was another one. A, a, Do you think they are a victim in I, this case? I don't believe they're a victim. I believe they've been played. Played. They've been played, you know, because you look at, they tried to do this smartly. I was impressed that they didn't go, they're not, they Smartly. were smart in the way they were yeah. fighting. I'm not saying I'm agreeing, I'm looking yeah, at the, yeah. because they targeted an 90%, again, it's mapped out, 90% of their missiles targeted military installations, Israeli military installations in the Golan Heights along the border, um, wherever they were trying to target, uh, yep. they wanted military installations, knocking out telecommunications. And then when uh, Israel was become more aggressive in Lebanon and hitting civilians and killing civilian areas, they upped the ante before they... Yep. And they went into hitting uh, civilian areas in northern Israel and even now reaching as far into Haifa and Tel Aviv and other areas. You know, we have a lot of people saying, great, get rid of Hezbollah. And I think... Did what, you have the same feeling or I the worry. same perception that you have now when Hezbollah was fighting in Syria and killing the Syrian people? I was, and no, supporting the absolutely not. Of Syria? Absolutely, they were, they, that was uh, completely wrong. Fighting anywhere outside of... That, that, that's, that is an aggression. That is a... Um, that demonstrates why so many Lebanese people you know, dislike Hezbollah because it's gone beyond its mandate of Lebanon. What I started with, it had a mandate and a clear mandate to protect Lebanon's borders from Israel's invasion. That we were happy with and it got Israel out and it should have handed back its weapons in 1992 with everyone else in 19, after Taif was uh, implemented. It should have handed in its weapons with every other militia. 100%, that's what should have happened. But Syria, who was in control of Lebanon at the time, didn't want Hezbollah to hand in their weapons because they wanted them as they their... They wanted to use them. They wanted yeah. to use them. 100%. And our leaders at the time, from Rafi Hariri to Nabi Barri to Wali Jumblah to whoever, all of them, should have demanded and kept demanding that that, is executed and implemented and should have got the whole Arab world yeah. who signed off on Ta'if to put pressure on, Bash on uh, Hafiz al-Assad at the time to enforce this and they didn't. Yeah, by the that way. is the yeah. root of the, of the problem, the, really, that would have prevented this from happening. Yeah, by the way, Hafiz al-Assad is the one who placed those leaders. So you can't place someone in a position and then this someone will. No, Ask but I'm saying that's why you get the, the Arab world that mm -hmm. met this King Faisal at the time was very much the Saudi king who sponsored this uh, talks wanted an end. He loved Lebanon. His wife was one of his wives was from the. He wanted an end, yeah. and they he our any one of them okay. could have gone on a mission to those leaders in the Arab world and said, "You need to help us." You need to use your influence. Yeah, obviously, this these discussions would never end. He said uh, that the, the situation in the Middle East is always linked to uh, different places around the world. Okay, um, uh, my last question to you: How was your experience with Brain Splat? And if you do re recommend Brain Splat for other guests? Well, I got to tell you, it's one of the most uh, engaging, challenging interviews I've had, and I loved it. Um, you're a very intelligent um, interviewer. I really like your Thank style you. and I've been interviewed a lot and I'm an interviewer and so I really respect your questions. Well thought out and, um, you know, you come with a re with a mission and that's you've come with a plan. So I've had a great experience. I've really enjoyed it and I hope people uh, have, you know, benefited from the information that we've given them. 
totally recommend it for people to watch this podcast and every podcast of yours, Roland, because you are not doing it without, you know, a lot of people just sit and talk, but you come studied, like you've come well researched, and I respect that. Thank you, Roland. Thank you.